a biblical perspective on life, culture and current events. This is 2020 on Vision. If you are like a lot of parents, you may be bewildered at the values that your children come home from school with. Around the nation, there appears to be a widespread concern about the woke values coming from schools. So whether it is the public system or even a Christian school or in home education, you might be asking, what can parents do? Well, our next guest will be speaking on a panel at the upcoming Church and State Summit in March, addressing issues around Christian home education. Rachel Reed, who is a mum who serves on the governing council of her local school in Tumby Bay in South Australia, is joining us. Rachel, a special welcome along to 2020. Hello, thank you for having me. Rachel, you're going to be on this panel and you're going to be making a contribution because you've got a story to tell. But uh, this is all coming around parents and the education of their children. This is becoming very important to so many parents, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Um, people think that um, it's more in America and the UK and, you know, other countries. That's sort of not really happening here in Australia, but it absolutely is happening here in Australia and it's happening in little country towns and in suburban schools. So it's everywhere. Let's get a little more specific. What do you see is happening in our schools today that parents ought to be especially concerned about? Well, uh, from my experience, um, I joined the Governing Council a year ago and um, the education director came to talk about the principal's job and she said, we've got a new curriculum. And I thought, okay, and I, I, just, I felt really prompted to look at the curriculum. So I looked into it and it was a, there's a revised edition from from last year and that's a nationwide thing. So it actually says in there that, and I hope it's not too explicit, um, it says in this curriculum that they want to teach the kids about sexual pleasure and how to be good lovers. And I was really concerned. It said a, a, a whole stack of other stuff as well. So I took it to governing council and I brought it up and I said, I'm really concerned about this. And, and they sort of hushed it away and said, oh, we're not, you know, we're not really doing that. So I said, okay. And then a few months later, um, a couple of mums came to me and said that their 10-year-old boys had come home and said they could cut off their genitals, take medication and change their gender or and be cats or dogs if they wanted to be. Um, and they were furious. So um, we went to a parents' meeting uh, with the teacher and they asked me to come because I'd already gone to governing council and talked about it. Um, and we asked if we could have a look at the curriculum and they wouldn't let us. They said we're not trained. So they can show it to 10-year-olds, but they can't show it to parents. Uh, we asked if we could have a parent information night and they said no. They, we asked if we could um, have a, a letter sent home explaining what was being taught, you know, being really upfront and honest. No, nah, can't do that. Um, so... There's a lot of undermining of parents. There's a lot of lying and deceiving going on. Um, and I've actually got the policy from the Department of Education stating the procedure if a child comes and says to a teacher, I'm trans or queer or whatever, um, and it directly says that the school can make a decision overriding the parent. It actually says that in black and white. The school's word is more powerful in the development of your child's sexuality than the parents. And yes. if I'm putting two and two together here, you're talking about 10-year-olds. Is that the case? Is that like, so you'd be saying, right. what, this is year four, year five? Uh, yes. This is the and, sort and of age from this year, Yes, from this year they're going down to uh, year three, which is nine-year-olds. All right. A lot of parents might be shaking their heads. Others will be saying, you know what? I've noticed there's changes in the way my kids are mm. coming home with different ideas about these things. Mm. When you get together with parents and you say, we've got to speak up and say something, what sort of reaction do you get? What sort of reaction did you get when you maybe shared this with some other parents and said, are you aware what they're teaching our kids? It's a, it's a mixed reaction. There's a whole stack of parents who um, don't believe it. 
they just like no they wouldn't do that they just can't believe that it's true then there's a whole group of parents who are really really worried um and they want to keep their kids in school um but they just they don't know what to do they feel like they don't have a voice they feel powerless um and then there's you know that small group who are already woke and think it's a wonderful idea so there's a, a mixed group, but the majority of parents don't like it. And I actually, I've had two community parent meetings uh, for the whole Air Peninsula. So it wasn't just for Tommy Bay, it was for all of the surrounding towns. And probably about 40 people came to both and they're very, very concerned um, and, and wanting to know what to say to the school and to the principal and to the teacher. So when you think of uh, what happens when your child comes home and these are the revelations, uh, you will be thinking, uh, do I keep my child in school? Uh, can mm. I take my child out of school? And it comes to what options we might have. And sometimes, no doubt, we're going to be restricted by all sorts of you know, economic conditions, uh, whether we could afford to send our children to a private school. And for some, that's just yep. out of the question. How do you think of options for parents who are concerned? I think there's probably three different options. One is to inoculate your child at home. Now, if they're really young, I think that's a challenge because the pressure of it is really intense. But if you can't take your child out, sit and have a discussion with your child about what your family believes and what the truth is, what the Word of God says you know, this, there, there's nothing else. There's male and female. That's all. And, you know, there's scientific proof for that down at the cemetery. If we go and dig up all the bones, there's only male and female bones. Explaining all of that to your child, you know, teaching them truth so that they're not easily persuaded at school. The private school thing can be a bit complicated because I know that there's Lutheran schools and, you know, Anglican schools, Catholic schools who are teaching this stuff. So I really think it's very dependent on the specific school. So if you have a school in mind, I would go to them and say, can I have a look at what you're teaching and specifically ask them? And if they're happy to show you and, you know, get everything out, that's that's wonderful. I know there are some Christian schools who aren't teaching it, um, but you really need to go do that homework for yourself. Um, and then homeschooling is really great because they're home with you and you're the one doing the, the work. And what you're sharing uh, will be causing some parents to shudder because when you say that even some of the Christian schools are teaching mm. these woke attitudes and early exposure to these quite adult concepts, um, thoughts here about homeschooling because that's clearly another option there and that maybe not for every parent either, but taking your children out of schools. Maybe you can't find a school in your community that wants to teach yeah. your child that there is male and female according to our biblical values. Uh, what about the homeschooling option? Oh, I love it. I actually, I have five children um, and my daughter, my sorry, my third child just finished year 12 last year and she was in Tumby School, but I'm actually homeschooling our two little ones because God spoke so clearly to me and said, it, take them out. Um, so, no, I've, I've taken that on and I've, I'm just using a curriculum so that I'm not overwhelmed by trying to come up with something. Um, it's all kind of preset. Um, but, it, you know, it is a sacrifice because I can't work um, and, you know, it's something that is a, a labour of love and an investment that I'm making in my children's lives and their future and the future of their family and how they raise their children. So I, I'm trying to look at it that you know, what I'm doing is really a work for God and a work for my family, um, not just trying to get them out of that, but it's actually investing in the future. So, um, yeah, it is, it is a big call and it's a lifestyle change. But how how do you describe the sort of pressure that comes upon you and uh, I'll assume your husband here uh, mm. when you've got to make this sort of decision and uh, you're pushed into a corner, if you don't do something, your children will be in some ways indoctrinated into a sort of a woke thinking about sexuality if you don't do something. But how do you describe the pressure that comes on you when you've got to make that sort of decision? I'm going to take my kids out. Uh, I, you know, at first I did feel a bit overwhelmed. Um, and my husband obviously then being the only 
person providing financially, that can, you know, feel overwhelming. But we kind of got ourselves into a place where we had reduced debt and we were willing to give up other things um, for the sake of raising the kids. Um, and, you know, that means not having nice holidays or being willing to sacrifice nice things so that we can have the benefit of training the children. Um, and that's that's not an easy decision and every family has to come to that sort of personally uh, themselves. And a lot of parents feel um, like they've got like a big mortgage or whatever that they need both people working. So that, it you know, it can be really challenging. Um, and I'm so, so grateful that we have been able to do it. Um, and there are a lot of families on the Air Peninsula actually who homeschool. Um, and I know the homeschooling um, department of the Department of Education is overwhelmed at the moment because they've got so many families joining. So Home, it's a huge movement. Homeschooling's yep. on the rise, that's for sure. Definitely. What do you say to parents who have their children in a school? It could be a state school, as you say. It could even be a Christian mm -hmm. school teaching these woke yep. values. How do you encourage parents who, where it's not an option to take the children out, it's not an option to do homeschooling, how do you mm -hmm. encourage them to take an active leadership role uh, in the education of their children and then the influence that comes upon the school for perhaps, uh, you know, uh, lobbying for some change? Yep. I think the first thing you need to do is opt your child out of the health sex ed class. That is something you can do. They will not tell you about that, but it is an option. You can opt your child out and they can go to the library and do work, uh, like do homework in the library or read or whatever. Um, that is definitely an option, but it is a pervasive um, ideology. So it is actually in a lot of classes. So you just need to be aware that it, they could be talking about it in English or um, science or other subjects but it's predominantly in health and sex ed that most of this stuff gets taught and they get shown videos of really explicit videos. <laughs> um, so opt your child out. The, and that, like I said before, um, train your child in the way your family, um, what your family thinks and believes in the word of God, but also go and join your governing council or your parents group or whatever it is that, you know, the, the parents' involvement at school and be noisy and be annoying. I, Tumby Bay School is annoyed with me. <laughs> um, they've not they've not enjoyed my challenges and my questions. But it's not just my children I'm standing up for. I'm standing up for all of the children. And and in Proverbs thirty one it says that we need to speak for those who cannot speak for themselves. So I really feel like it's a mandate from God as a Christian to speak up for these children. And to say to the teachers and to the principal, actually, you know, we're not okay with you just going ahead and teaching whatever you want. You need to be accountable to us because they're our children. Well, Rachel, uh, you might be seen as an irritation <laughs> in the school community where you are active. Uh, but for I'm suspecting the majority of those listening to our conversation today, you are a champion for a cause which you cannot roll over and just let it happen. You've yeah. got to stand up and you've got to speak up and you've got to join in the fight. This is what you'll be encouraging people to do when you are a part of the upcoming Church and State Summit. You've been invited to tell your story and be a part of a panel and there'll be hundreds in the room who'll be interested in the way you're tackling this because they're going to be taking that message back to communities yeah. and it's going to filter its way back into states and uh, through national media, all sorts of mm -hmm. ways. But Church and State Summit is coming up Friday and Saturday, the 8th and 9th of March in Brisbane. And then uh, for some later dates in Hobart, in Launceston, in Perth and in Adelaide. But here's how you register for the upcoming Church and State Summit. Go to the churchandstate.com.au website, churchandstate.com.au, and you'll have an opportunity to personally meet Rachel Reed, who is a champion mother serving on the governing council of her local school in Tumby Bay in South Australia and now doing homeschooling with her children. Rachel, thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today on 2020. 
Thank you for having me and for giving me the opportunity to share this story. It's been been a pleasure. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.